Good afternoon, Nick Martin, everybody. Fantastic day to be atop the grandstands here. Great scene. Packed enclosures. Here we go. Coming in, and they're off. The EFT Systems, Margot Novices, Steeple Chase, and Grade One Company gets us underway in Grand National Day here at Aintree. As they take the first fence, the cross fence on the side is Marble de Cerisi, who leads early on under Rachel Blackmore. From the hot favourite, John Bond, who races in second. He in turn then, about four lengths clear from Calico, dark green and white, with the orange cap, and Fasane is with him as they enter the home run and head towards the first of three fences in the straight. Oh, Marble to Cerisi took a real chance there. Gets the other side OK, though, and lands running by two and a half lengths in front as they go towards an open ditch. Marble de Cerisi stood off again. Not quite as alarming as the previous fence, though. Land running by an advantage of about eight lengths now, perhaps, has stepped on the gas between these two fences. From John Bon, and then came Calico, who pressed John Bon, of course, in the Kingmaker early on the season all the way. Fusain back in fourth. This will be the final fence next time around. Marvel de Cerisi leads the way for the Henry de Bromhead team under Rachel Blackmore. And be on board, ain't that a shame, later on in the Grand National. Leading by a couple now. John Bon has closed in the gap. John Bon, he lost an unbeaten record over fences in the Arkle last time, trying to give Nicky Henderson another winner in this race. A race he's taken in the past of the likes of Finian's Rainbow Sprinter, Sakura and Shishkin. Calico's back in third place under Harry Skelton. He rides Lemilos later on. And then came Fusain, last of the quartet under Brian Hughes. Into the back straight, four fences await them down there. And it's Marvel de Cerisi racing enthusiastically out in front, a little close to that one. That gave John Bon a chance to close in to be only a length or so behind now. Four lengths away then to find Calico at the second of the fences down the back. And then Fusain, he continues to be last of the quartet. At this next plane obstacle, it's once again Marvel de Cerisi who landed with the lead. From a little wider out, John Bon as they approach the open ditch down the far side, fence number seven. Calico lands in third, quite deliberate there, Fusain had a good long look at the ditch, so he's just getting a little bit detached and behind Calico now by the tune of eight lengths, that second to last horse at the final fence over on the back straight, and John Bond's come there going strongly to the outside, and Marvel de Cerisi, he tries to kick on again, Calico about six lengths behind, and Fusain continues, but some way behind the others now. So they're about to race down the side of the course, Head towards the cross fence. John Bond to the outside of Marvel de Cerisi. With Calico about five lengths behind the leading pair. Then Fusain. That was four out. Calico is at a bit too close there in third position. Fusain continues last to four as John Bond strides into the lead and leaves Marvel de Cerisi toiling behind. He's given his running now. Calico is off in pursuit of John Bond as they enter the home straight with three to take. It's John Bond and Aidan Coleman at three and he sails over that from Calico who lands in second. Marble to Cerisi is over in third for Sane, just coming to that third last as John Bon heads towards the final open ditch. Two from the end, steadies, and he's over in front. Calico looking to close in now, and now just a shake of the range from Aiden Cole. And Calico though is also under pressure, looking to close the gap, drawing right away from Marble to Cerisi and for Sane, who has cleared that second last. Racing down to the final fence, and it's John Bon beginning to assert now. Calico is about eight lengths behind in second, out the final fence, and John Bon is over safely. Calico is down. Calico has fallen when in second place. Marwood to Cerisi has now inherited that, but John Bon left clear by that final fence fall. And goes on to win, and records his fourth win over fences. He takes the Margul Novices chase. John Bon the winner from Marwood to Cerisi in second, and for Sane, last to three to get round. John Bond has just won the Grade 1 Maghill Novices Chase here at Aintree, the first day on Randolph's Grand National Day. Aidan Coleman, of course, is his rider and his passionate defender at times. I know how much you love this horse, but that was a super round of jumping from him. Yeah, as always. Um, I think when he spoke to me after uh, the, the Arkle, I just didn't feel he kind of got out of that ground as well. Back and kind of more or less top of the ground now. It's this lovely slow side. He was he was much more at home and he pinged, he, he really jumps better off it because he's he's quite a low and neat jumper and, and um, I think on that tacky ground the Cheltenham he just got stuck a little bit. But that was a different day. He still ran very well obviously, and uh, he's had a great career, hasn't he, so far and onwards and upwards. Very much so. I thought you were probably going to say that springier ground was right up his. Yeah, that's basically it. I think you know I think we still could go up and trip. There's lots of options for him. I you know 
know, he could probably, you know, two miles good ground riding him aggressive or forward like that is, 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 is uh, he's a fan of that. But I think the way he relaxes and the way he jumps and the way he races now, I think you can do anything you want to him. As that's why I've always defended him well because he's been painted in a picture of uh, not the easiest ride. But I've never. I've never felt it myself, and I'm the one riding him, so I think hopefully, but to be fair, I haven't had to defend him this year, so no. I'm, uh, maybe people are coming on side. Well, I mean, it, he was he was doing his usual thing in the paddock, he was looking a bit a bit sweaty, and people were going, ooh, but it never translates to what he does in the race. Never, it hasn't either. He's here to race, he's a free sweater, I think he's a free sweater even in home, with, you know, and every horse that Nicky's has two rugs on, he's got one, you know, he's just a, he's a warm horse, and he's a walk in the park as well, they're quite precocious mm, yeah. characters, very good sire, and that's what they kind of do, you know what I mean, they, they can get warm, and the day he's not warm, would be probably not ideal but I think look, look he's 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 mature he's mature well he's just a very good horse and he's a very nice horse and I'm a big fan <laughs> now if you had a free hand imagine it was just you solely making the decision the next next season and I know it isn't but what would you like to do in your in your mind's eye would you love to take Al Fabiolo and the, and the existing top two milers on on a, the right kind of surface or would you like to go for a sort of more Ryan Airy type of route what would you prefer <laughs> You're not going to expect me to answer that, Lydia, are you? <laughs> well, I, have go. I'd be happy to. Uh, look, look, uh, I think on good ground he's worth a crack at that, but obviously in the depths of the winter it's not necessarily always good ground. Um, and I think you could chop and change with him whatever you want. I really do. I think he's that just. I think he's that straightforward that you could, you could, you could do it. You could step him right up if you wanted, and I'm sure he'd be fine. But I, he's great fun to ride on good ground, two miles anyway. So that's the most fun anyway. <laughs> I, so we'll see. I did get an answer. It was worth worth no, asking. <laughs> the big dog looking ahead to, to the big race. You must be very much looking forward to him. Yeah, can't wait. He's um, look. He's a very good horse. He's uh, and hence he's probably got plenty of weight as well but he's arguably going to be second or third or fourth like just behind galloping the champs in the Irish Gold Cup when he fell he ran a super race with me in Chepstow on, uh, with like over 12 stone on his back and, and before that he won two big handicaps and usually you win one big handicap you're kind of well in if you win two you're better than a handicapper and then he nearly won three as in the Welsh National and then he went and was going to be very competitive in grade one company so look he's a very very good horse and I'm really looking forward to riding him he can make an error but are those fences going to suit him and the way he jumps um, yeah I think like he's, he, what he is, is he's very big and he wouldn't have the most scope so I'm going to give him a bit of room and give him a look at his do and get him out good and smart and then and then don't rush him after that if you know what I mean and okay. well that's the plan might not work well we're very both best of luck I hope it comes off thank you John Bond's trainer it is of course Nicky Henderson and it ended up being a bit of a one-sided contest but the one thing you could say is he was thrilling in terms of his jumping he seemed to enjoy that ground yeah it's an extraordinary week isn't it we had a lovely day on the first day lovely ground then all that rain yesterday and by god you got wet quickly yeah. and then you know, lovely day. We're nearly back on good ground. Time say that. And he loved that. Mm. He was getting a good job. He was jumping too. That's that's seeing him in his very best light. I mean, I know the opposition probably wasn't as strong. I'm certainly wasn't as strong as the Arsenal, but that's him in his best light. Yeah, no, that you know, he'd take on most horses as he was today. Yeah. So, <laughs> what are you going to do with him next? Well, time? You know, it's funny, I mean, the whole way after Cheltenham, I was saying, here, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. And JP, quite rightly, always said, well, we know that the win of Simon Isaac's horse wasn't coming here. We knew that Dysart Dynamo wasn't coming here. And then you had to say, well, what will run in the two mile left? Whereas you could see where the two and a halves were. And we entered him in both. But once you saw the entries, there was no question which way you had to go. And, and okay, let's just go back and pretend he is a, he is a two-miler. And he is, actually, as Aidan said there. You know, on really good ground, he feels like a two-miler. So are you going to kind of keep your options open with him next season? Go two and a half miles if the race is appropriate, go two miles if the yeah. race is appropriate. The ground, more uh, ground driven maybe? I think ground might be the sort of, I, I, I do think he loves good ground. He's a really good moving horse. He's very athletic. His jumping is deadly when he's like this. You'd seen him school the other day at home. Aiden came down, just jumped five fences on him. And it was, it was just good to watch. Um, it was right, AP was with us and we just, Yep, he's on sog. that's he's on sog, you know, and that's the sort of thing that it just let him down a bit at Cheltenham. Maybe it was the ground, I don't know, but, you know, he's, he's proved himself today and he's had a great first season of offences and we can, 
we haven't got to make any decisions. I mean, that's what the summer's for, whether it's Constitution Hill or Shishkin or John Bond. I mean, they've all got to we'll pick their targets for next year. Hopefully they're all back safe and sound and we can look forward to it all again. Absolutely. First they've got to have the holidays. More immediately, Champ and who's come from a break and Murray's Rock stepping up to three miles for the first time both in the Liverpool hurdle was the d break with Champ deliberate? Yes, totally, again, JP he said this horse is brilliant when he's fresh let's just wait, just just wait let them all go and have their dust up elsewhere and keep him fresh for entry and he's fresh and he's well um, he obviously loves three miles ground great um, Marie's Rock. She was a bit disappointing, like some of them in that mare's at Cheltenham, but she was very good on, on New Year's Day there. And, you know, she won round here last year. She was very, very good. Can't believe three miles is going to be a problem, but I can get these things wrong quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to the race nonetheless. And Mr. Coffee, can he break his duck in the national over fences? His duck? What about mine? <laughs> <laughs> Yours too, yeah, I know. I was being polite. <laughs> an unlikely vessel, He's really. He's only been trying for two years. I've been trying for 40. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you? Can he? <laughs> he can. <laughs> Tightly unlikely, according to statistics. <laughs> I'm not sensing that you're expecting it, so it's basically, how is he? Is he, he well? Is in, it's, it's always the plan. Right. Yeah, he ran a great race in Cheltenham, to be honest. You know, that race has very often proven to be a good trial. Uh, Novices have won the Grand National, not too many, I mean, he is technically a maiden of offences, he's a maiden of offences, yeah. So, I mean, it, it can happen, you've got to hurry up and have them. <laughs> well, I wish, I wish you the very best of luck in breaking your mutual duck, yeah. and also in the Liverpool Hurdle in between, and congratulations to the job. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.